Okay, so now that you, you've you got your map kind of looking the way you want it to, and feel free to add in those natural layers and the waterways as well, I'm just going to keep mine with the roads and buildings for now. What you're going to do is you're going to create a map out of it. So, um, so you can see kind of how it would look, for instance, if I add in the land use, or if I add in, this is another layer called natural that you can search from OSM. I'm just going to keep it like this. So you go up to your um, project, and then go down to New Print Layout. So if anyone has used AutoCAD, this is really similar to Model Space versus Paper Space. We're going now into Paper Space. So we're going to basically create a view of this model um, geographical information that we've got here. So we're going to call this um, VT Roads. And then we're going to say OK. All right, so the first thing that you want to do here is you want to make this a, a, a page size that you are going to use. So I like to go with something like um, legal paper. Um, you can also do a custom. So you can do change your units to inches and do 17 inches by 11 inches tall. So a little bit bigger than legal, just do 11 by 17. That's nice and simple and then um, go back here. So now we've got a page size that's that's going to be um, pretty easy to work with. I like to use the hand here just so that I'm not um, unintentionally selecting things. So the first thing we're going to add to this print layout is going to be our map. So over here you go to the one that looks like a scroll of paper and you click that and then what you're going to do is you're going to click and drag. So click and drag kind of the size you want your map to be and at first we're just going to kind of see, it'll it'll kind of plop us down where our viewport is. So that's what we've got right now. So again, we can kind of see these major highways coming through Blacksburg. We can see um, a little bit of the pedestrian ways. It's a little bit hard to see though. I kind of want to focus a little bit more on the Virginia Tech campus area. So I'm going to zoom in and there's a couple ways you can do that. Right now um, I've got this arrow selected, which is select move items. So that's moving this item around. But if I want to click and move inside the map, I can choose this move item content. So I click on that and then I'm inside the map. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gradually kind of zoom in a little bit um, by scrolling, scrolling in. So that's a little bit too much. It's a tiny bit hard to control this way. So what I actually prefer for zooming in and out of a map is to select the item with this select tool again, go to item properties, and then you've got your scale right here. Um, so I'm going to change the scale to something a little bit larger so that I'm zooming out a bit. So I'm going to change it to 10,000. So that's going to be 1 to 10,000. It was at about 1 to 8,000 before, 1 to 7,500. Okay, so it zoomed out a little bit. I want to zoom out a little bit more than this, so I'm going to change this to 12,000. So it's kind of just guess and check. Um, all right, that's looking pretty good. I think that'll do. So what I'm going to do now is I want to make sure that all of Virginia Tech's campus is uh, going to be shown. We'll actually zoom out a tiny bit more here. So I'm going to click move item content again, and then I'm just going to pan around inside it and kind of center tech and main street a little bit more inside the map so you can see 460 coming down through here you can see main street coming here um, and prices fort coming down over here um, all right so we've got that pretty well centered there i'm gonna yeah we'll leave that like that for now okay so the map you know play around with it get to the way you like it the next important item that we're going to add is a legend so we're just going to click and add this on here. It's going to look really ugly at first. So you can see it's just thrown everything in there that is anywhere in our map. So the first thing you want to do is check only show items inside linked map here in the item properties of your legend. So I just scroll down to that. And then once that adjusts, you should see that it cuts out any layers that you're not currently showing in your map. So we're getting a little bit more legible here. Um, unfortunately, we still have this kind of ugly thing going on. So I'm going to go ahead and manually edit my legend by unchecking auto update. 
So then I can go in and actually change things as I want and it won't be automatically updating it uh, or locking these items and trying to link it still to the map. So I basically just turned it off and made it, um, instead of a smart item, I made it kind of a stupid item. So firstly, I'm gonna double click into this and delete all of this stuff. And we'll go back. Sometimes you have to, there we go. Okay, great. So now it's just buildings and they're just gray. That's great. I'm gonna change that too. It feels a little bit aggressive all uppercase like that. I'm gonna make it lowercase like this. All right. Sometimes you have to uh, Sometimes it's a little bit finicky and you have to click around a little bit. Um, all right. So we're going to change this name to Virginia Tech. All right. So that updated correctly. I'm not sure why this one's not updating correctly. Um, I guess it just doesn't doesn't really want to cooperate. That's all right. I'm gonna leave it for now. All right. So road sidewalks. We're gonna change that to um, um, roads and paths. Not sure why it's not letting me. It's not letting me edit this this uh, main text here. So I'm gonna just simplify some of these things. I'm gonna remove a couple of the items that we're not really using and just kind of simplify this map a little bit here. And we're going to change this to pedestrian. And then we're going to change this to bikeway. And we're going to change this to highway. We're going to change this to primary road. secondary road and tertiary road. And we're going to also move these around a little bit so they're kind of in an order that makes a bit more sense. So we can use these arrows here and we can move things around a bit. So we're going to grab this primary road, move it down down here and delete steps as well because it's the same color as the pedestrian ways. And you can see all these residential roads up here are a pretty prominent feature so I'm going to leave that as its own category. So I'm just trying to organize the information so that it's um, legible, right? So that's easy to understand what I'm trying to talk about in this map and that you can get something useful about the place I'm talking about just by scanning it. So we'll actually move the residential road down to the bottom, kind of put it in a bit of an order here. Color order. All right, great. So we've got pedestrians and bikes at the top and then highway, primary, secondary, tertiary, and residential. And then Virginia Tech buildings there. And then, uh, so this one updated now. Um, 
to say Blacksburg buildings. That might just take a second to update again. It seems to be a little bit finicky. Um, and we'll change this to actually say Virginia Tech buildings. So it's very clear. All right, and then we've got a legend. And then what we can also do is add a title to this. We'll say legend. Great, very creative. You can also change the text size and the font and things like that of this if you want to. I'm not going to do that right now, but if you want to mess around with that, it's uh, in... If you scroll down below the legend items, you can see fonts and texts and symbols and spacing and all that kind of good stuff. So we'll leave that for now. I think that's looking pretty legible, pretty much makes sense. Um, the other important things that we need to make sure we add to our map and that you should always have on your map uh, are going to be a north arrow and a scale. So we'll just draw a north arrow right here. Now the north arrow symbol that I prefer is If you go here under arrows, I like this one. I think this is nice and simple. This just circle with a with a line in the top, and you can change the um, the parameters down here. So I'm going to actually make the fill color slightly darker, more like that, and the stroke color um, is fine. We're going to actually make the stroke zero, so that's just a fill, just like that. And I'm going to shrink it down a little bit to match kind of the scale of the other things we got going on here. Move that over here. And then I'm going to add, I'm actually going to put that right on the map because the map's got some white space that we can fill up. And then we're going to add the scale. Same thing, click and drag. You got a scale element. And I think. The box is nice. I kind of like the stepped line like that. I think that's nice and clean. So we're going to grab that and we're going to move it up here. And then I also want this to be in um, miles, something that is going to be a bit more useful. Um, and sure, half a mile seems like a good maximum. So I'm just going to move this out of the way a bit, grab my north arrow you can also use your arrow keys to kind of nudge objects. So I'm going to nudge that over there, grab the scale, nudge it over a little bit as well. And we've got a more or less legible map of Blacksburg talking about its, its different uh, pedestrian accesses and roadways. You could even add some text if you want, labeling the major roadways like 460 and Main Street. Um, the last thing to do here is add a label to title your map. So we're going to say Virginia Tech and Blacksburg types of let's see cars v vs pedestrians. All right, and then we're gonna indent that just like that. Okay, so um, you can adjust the size of that title. So I want my, my font to be a little bit larger. So I'll click on the font. I'm gonna adjust the size. I'm gonna make it 30, see how that looks. All right, and then we're gonna, let's change it to something a little bit more commanding. Let's try uh, Let's do a din. Um, okay. And then let's see if we can Sure, that's fine. All right. Um, so that's our title. You can, you know, you can underline it. If we did click on the font again. We want to underline. Just do that. 
Okay. And it's looking pretty good. We got a map. We got a legend. We got a scale. We got a north arrow. We got a title. Um, the last thing that you should add is a source box. So I think it's just always good practice to say where you got your data from. So say data source or something like that. Open street map. And that's the only data source we have today. So that's good. And you can just kind of put that somewhere in the bottom. You can put your name, you can put the date, whatever else you want. And we'll just stick that down there. Bump it down a little bit. You can add, um, you know, you can click and drag lines and, and align things and, and all that good stuff. You can add arrows and annotations. You can even kind of freehand draw things on it if you want to outline things. Um, I'm going to line this under the map. You can hold down shift. It works pretty intuitively. Um, a lot of a lot of Q is just clicking around. And if you get errors and things, just kind of um, there's pretty robust help uh, help sources online, uh, forums and things like that, because a lot of people use QGIS. We're just going to leave it like this for now. Not the not the nicest thing in the world, but it'll do for our purposes. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Command S. Great, and then we're going to export it as a PDF with this up here. You can also export it as an image if you want. I prefer PDF. So we're going to export as a PDF. Let's see, one more thing if we can get that. Oops. Okay, there we go. Alright, so click on the legend. I'm just going to see if I can get this this uh, this buildings to cooperate here. So Blacksburg buildings just doesn't seem to be liking to pick that up. Okay. All right. So so you can export it as a PDF. Go to export. Um, save it wherever you want. Save it as whatever you want. Click save. And you've got all these options. Um, doesn't really matter. There's nothing that you really need to, you know, you can play around with this. Uh, save it, and there you go. That's it. So that's your first map in QGIS using OpenStreetMap data. Um, you know, play around with the different styling, see what kind of data stories you can tell with your map, and, uh, and have fun and be patient with Q, because it's, like any mapping software, it's a little bit uh, ornery. It can be, it can be finicky. You just gotta, you know, take your time, let it load, and uh, you know, troubleshooting is is a is a is a test of patience. So you know, just. Um, but as you can see, it's really quick and easy to make a pretty convincing map that tells a pretty interesting story about the place that you live. Um, so have fun with it.